Okay, we're going to change the backgrounds <coughs> on a picture. We're going to take a picture and replace it, take it out of one background and put it into another using GIMP. I like this better than Photoshop. It's a lot, seems like a lot simpler and a lot more straightforward. So, first thing you do is open GIMP. If you don't know how to get that, you can go online and download it. It's a free download. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the pictures that we're going to use and in this video. So, go to File, Open, and find where your picture is. flag for one and then for the other picture we're going to use a red background that uh, I took a picture of myself for this video we open it the first thing that we want to do is we want to scale this down because you don't want <coughs> this picture will cover the flag so you want to first downsize it. To do that you go to image, scale image, and in this case I know from doing this before that I'm going to down, uh, downsize it just a little bit to 3000 and the aspect ratio will stay the same. This will uh, both numbers will change once I put 3000 in. Now you may want to do your smaller or larger, it just depends on what kind of picture and what kind of background that you have. And then you just go down and click on scale. <clears throat> now the next thing you want to do is you want to put a layer behind this picture so when you delete the red out you'll have a invisible background. To do that you have to add a layer to it, an invisible layer that sits underneath this picture. On that you go to this little square down here, it says create a new layer and add to image. You want the same size, 3000 by 2349 pixels, and you want it transparent, you want uh, a transparent background, so we just hit right here OK. <clears throat> now we've got to put this picture on this layer, this invisible layer. So you click on the image and then you go to edit and copy. And then you want to click on the layer that you're going to copy the picture on top of, which is the invisible layer. And you say edit and paste. Now it has copied this image over to here and now you have to rename the new picture and I'm going to call it combined and then hit enter on your keyboard now these two images have become one the next thing you want to do is you've got to take this red away from the picture here in other words you're going to cut the picture my picture out and paste it onto this picture up here of the flag. So to do that we use a tool called the fuzzy select tool which is this little looks like a little magic wand. You click on that and when you do you'll get these pop-ups down here and when you get to those pop-ups you want the one that's got the two red squares and what that does is allow you to find different spots on the picture to remove. So click on it and then click on the image, not yourself or the picture, but of the background. And when you do that you'll see that the select tool is removing parts. And it, if you make a mistake, don't worry. You just go to edit, undo fuzzy select, and then you find another spot to click on. Is to, again, so we, get, we don't want to get into the face part. 
So we're going to try this and this. And now we're getting pretty close to cutting out what we want to cut out. It looks like we've done a pretty good job of cutting most of the picture out. It's kind of bordered around my picture. So once you've got that completed, then what you want to do is you want to invert this. Because right now if you take this and you try to copy and paste it onto the flag, it's going to copy and paste all this red. We want to cut that red out so that you go up to select and invert and that flips it. And now what you want to do is take this and paste it onto the flag. So we click on edit copy and we go to the flag and we'll go to edit and paste and it should paste the picture on the flag. And there it is. Now now we want to move this picture within on top of this we want to move it to a different location and to do that first you have to rename this because we've done another it's floating right now it's not actually pasted so you have to rename this and I'm going to say pasted and then hit enter on your keyboard and now <coughs> to move this image you click on this little compass it's a compass or a move tool it's called the move tool you click on that and it says move tool so now when you move this you want to make sure that you're on the image of the picture that you're going to move don't move outside here or to move the flag around so you want to be on the image part that you're going to move I usually just put it in the center of the picture and then just hold the mouse clicker down and put, drag it to where you want it. <clears throat> I'm going to drag it into the bottom right corner. And that will give me the picture. That's the position that I want the picture to be in. You may want to move it to a different area. You can do that. You can move this anywhere you want in within this image. <clears throat> and the next thing you have to do is you're going to have to erase this excess that we didn't get out the first time. We got most of it, but we're going to have to get the rest. Now to do that, you have to go to the erase tool, which looks like a little eraser. You click on it, and then you want to select the size brush that you want. So you click on the little black with a plus, and you can put whichever one of these tools you want to use. I'm going to use the second one over. It's a little bit uh, darker and I'll take a little bit more of the picture out. And now you want to make the size of the brush that you're going to use. You can see it's very small here. You can barely see it. To do that, you've got this that says size. So we're going to increase the size of the brush. We'll go to about 134. And then we click over here you start erasing. And you can, like I say, you can do this in Photoshop, but it seems it's taking me longer than it normally would because I'm doing this video, but it doesn't take very long at all to get this out. Trust me. It takes a little practice. I'm just getting the largest portion of it out of the way now and then we'll, I'll show you how to get closer in without erasing part of your image because if you get too close you'll erase part of the head in the picture or whatever that you got the object of. I could probably use the bigger brush but this will take care of most of it. You just it's just like using an eraser. You're just erasing stuff out that you don't need in the picture. Now that takes care of the largest part without being too tedious with it. And now when we want to, and to get in closer, 
all you have to do is go to the bottom of your screen and you'll see this says 18.2 percent that's how much of the of the ratio is showing we're going to go to 50 which will enlarge the picture enough to where we can get in closer now you can see how much bigger the brush looks so what we'll go do is go back over here and we'll decrease the size of the brush so we can get in closer and we just go in and start erasing see how close you can get with a smaller brush without disturbing the picture and trust me if you make a little mistake you can always go to edit and undo So let me make just a little mistake here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can go to Edit, Undo, Erase, and it'll go right back to where you started. We'll do that again. Hopefully we won't have to this time. Just take your time. Don't get in any rush. Like I say, you don't have to worry. If you make a mistake, you can always go back and undo. this will never show up in the picture anyway You'll, once you zoom back out see the mistake I made just there and you go to edit undo and it goes right back so start erasing anything that you see that shouldn't be in the picture. I've got a little bit of red in my hair right here. And trust me, one of the reasons I chose the red is because a red background is because I knew I had the red flag that would blend in with the picture if I did make a tiny bit of an area it'd never be noticed. You can actually give yourself a haircut while you're doing this, which I'm doing now, which will get rid of some of the red and it won't disturb the picture any. You can actually have pretty much fun with this because you can trim things up, make things look actually better than they were in the original picture. Like the hair needs to be trimmed right through there, so. I can make my hair look actually better than it was in the picture. Like I say, don't worry if you make a mistake, you can always go back and, and undo. still see a little bit of red right here but it will never show up right there at the ground now you can move your picture around and it's better to move your picture around using these bars on the side if you move it with the arrows it takes forever for it to move you see it moves real slow so grab it by the bar and just drag it down. I actually got closer than I thought I did over here with that big brush. So we're, we're about done. Oh, mistake. as far as we can go that way. Let's see if we got anything over here. We got a little bit of
let's go and zoom back out and see if there's anything we've missed. Back to 18 percent and it looks pretty good right there. So now I don't see any more red anywhere but what I'll do to, to be on the safe side is I increase the size of my brush here and this is a good idea to do this when you're through to go down these lines, perforated lines, because if you miss anything and it shows up there, it's going to look bad. This is, I've learned from this from experience. And just go over because you never know when you might miss something in here because you got the red and the white all blended in there. But I think we got the majority of it here. And now we're going to just go over and then GIMP. You don't save as, you go to export as, and then you change the name of the file to whatever you want to call it. I'll just me and flag. And this is going to be where the picture is stored. And you hit the export button, and then you can choose the quality that you want. Anything from 85 to 100 looks fine. And then you export it, and we'll look at it and see what it looks like when it's finished. I've done a lot of these pictures. Million flag. And that's the final look that you'll get. And that's how you do change one picture background and put it with another. I hope this helps you. Have a great day.